TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, November, part, part one, part uno, because we're what we're going to do here is we're going to get out of the deck of uno cards and we're going to play uno for your delight here. No, absolutely not. But this guy is going to Kansas City to see the Swifties, so we're not going to have him next week, and then I'm going to be recording with Slay J next week, so we're going to cover a little bit more stuff. Some of the same stuff, but mostly different stuff. So you get a good variety, and then some stuff's going to coincide as well. But we're going, what we're going to be covering this podcast is going to be Gen V... Doom Patrol Season 4, Part 2, the uh, Attack on Titan, the finale, and just in general the full review, because this guy has a wonderful review, and I love it. Uh, the Marvels, we're going to go more in-depth. Of course, we have our reviews out there, but we're going to go more in-depth on this one. Uh, Loki Season 2, going to be more in-depth than my little quick uh, TikToks, which I still have one more left, but it'll be out before this is out, for sure. And then... Yeah, Gen V. Wow. So opening. The opening blew my mind. So here's the thing. I have a thing where I try not to eat when I'm watching The Boys. And I was like, I shouldn't watch. I shouldn't eat something when I watch Gen V because I've heard that it's just like The Boys. And I was like, ah, it'll be fine. It'll only take me a few minutes to eat my food. <laughs> the opening scene was so insane and so messed up. I was like... Yep, I shouldn't have been eating during this scene, and I'm going to watch something else and then get come back to this. But it blew my mind, and I was like, wow, that was really messed up. That was that might be the craziest, one of the craziest things I've seen on the boys-related stuff. Like, there's one know. thing that's maybe a little crazier, the, the, but... The, the, the guy getting imploded. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. the guy uh -huh. who got bigger. Yeah. Yeah, that was... But this is close. This is close. So right from the get-go, it says... It's the boys. It's the same quality. It's the same level of grotesqueness. You get it right away. And then it rolls into this is college for being a soup. And yeah. It, and it, you think it's just going to be that at first, but it's not. Like, it's not It's not like X-Men. It's not like, oh, this is just a school for gifted youngsters. No, this is not. This is a, there's a full-blown cons uh, conspiracy going on, which is they're testing... Um, diseases or they're they're doing all these experiments so on basically on what it is specific uh it's soups. people who don't like soups who figured out instead of being openly against them be welcoming have a school so you can study them and their behavior and then eventually try to eradicate them well, I don't think it's necessarily that, right? Because the school is run by Vought, and Vought created soups, so they just want to be able to control them. They don't want to. They don't want to. There's there are there's one specific person that wants to decimate them. Well, it's sponsored by Vought, right? It's not ran. Okay. So, like, even from the founding. They got more corrupt as they went, but the whole idea was to... The original creator. Study. Is revealed. Yes, is study. to study the soups and to know what makes them tick. Right. What their weaknesses. What their weaknesses yeah, everything. are. Just pretty much everything. So, but yeah, and it's, it's it like I said, it's crazy from the get-go. It's nuts. I, I liked it a lot because... The characters were really great. You know, you have a good wide variety of characters. I also like, like, there's a character and they can transform, right? Like, they can transform and it, it makes them really powerful, but it also allows them to be transgender. So, and I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, I love the concept and it worked really well with the show and with the idea of just, like, the super thing and just all of it entirety and even... Like the other guy, the end being like, if you're, what if, if you had powers, but what if they were slowly killing you? Yeah. You know, like, would you still be a hero if, if it's, if it's, if it was slowly killing you or, or driving you crazy or whatever, cl closer to deathbed? Uh, so, and that's a really awesome concept. And really that's a lot of these people's powers kind of, right? Like, cause even like cutting yourself and making yourself like using your own well, blood as a weapon. Sort of. You learn more. You learn more where you can control other people's blood. And that was a great progression, too. Well, like, not just that. You learn about 
a uh, big character, character in the boys who who you realize what their power really is because it never says in the boys right it doesn't what their power is and then you see it here and it makes sense right I for the longest time I thought her power was kind of like that one character from Avatar that could like shoot mind bullets. No, I thought it was something else. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was so, controlling air. Oh, okay. Just think about it. Like the compression. Like you compress the air. Yeah, right. That would... Yeah, but it's from the it. inside out now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it was it was so good. And even like the ending was so crazy. Like the whole, the whole thing, it was such a great trip and how the characters grow uh, literally and figuratively. Yeah. And I love that too, how like there's this character and like she wants to be a hero, but... She's kind of getting pigeonholed into like, oh, but you're a shrinker. And it's like, but can she grow? And then even like that final reveal too was so awesome. And I love that type of stuff, right? To be like, oh, it's, you can control these things with your mind. You know, like, like them just learning their yeah. powers, their own abilities, which if there was like a Professor X and there was an actual school that helped them, they would discover these things that they could be greater and better and stronger. But it doesn't really, like you said, it's not that. It's just to figure out how how to kill them and how to control them, right? Like, it's just a money-making business. Like, that's what it is, is like, it's just how, because Orvat, at least, is like, how can we make money off them? But I love the way they did, like, they have, like, the town hall and, like, the news, the, the way they have, like, the media in this is, like, it's just, like, CNN... Fox, like the way they have like the feuding going on, you know, between the two, like how you have these polarizing sides and then what like the real issues are and how it's just like a giant distraction. So I love how they do that, which is very also X-Men like, right? To be like, we're going to put real life problems in, but because it's under this guise, you're not going to really pick up on it unless you are smart enough or, or, or do pick up on it, you know? So, but yeah, it, it was so good. The only thing I didn't really care for was, like, that ending clip scene. Because, like, they had, like, an extra clip at the end. And I was like, oh, yes, I was so jacked. And then, like, it was cool to see who it was. But then, like, his line was, like, didn't make sense to all of it. And was kind of dumb. And was like, why would he be there? Why That doesn't make sense. But whatever. We'll, well find out. Well, there's a reason why he would be there. So. It was very simple. They introduced someone tied to that character earlier who if for any reason they get tipped off on what's going on that guy will show up oh yeah so there was already possibility of him finding out more or less what's there and that character would show up if they had any suspicion of what was there at the school yeah so uh, overall, though, I the season was phenomenal. I, it was way better than I thought it would be. I originally was like, oh, it's just going to be a, a spin-off knockoff. They're not going to put as much time and money into it. And it was the same level of quality and like phenomenal cliffhanger and what lead into the next season of The Boys as well. And it, it was so great. I would, I would give this a must stream, a must see. It's on Amazon Prime video, so like... If you have to, if you don't have that subscription, get it. I don't know why. You, who doesn't have Amazon Prime now? At least like for the video, wow. and also the shipping, right? Like you get the shipping. There's like all these services kind of tied in into it. I don't know why people wouldn't, but if you don't get it, just to watch this show. Yeah, fun. especially if you're a fan of the boys, and if you're not, I, you, I think you would still watch like it on its own because yeah. it stands pretty good on its own, even though it ties into this world. You don't really need to know that much because they fill in the holes enough for you to get caught up. Yeah, it's really good. I enjoyed it. It's a must watch. And if you don't have Prime and you live close to Whole Foods, free delivery. Okay. There yeah. You go. So tell me about Doom Patrol Season 4, Part 2. Um, Basically, it ties up everything that we saw in what was called season four that be turned into part one. Okay. And uh, basically it basically it just ends the series too. Ties up uh, the loose ends and you you kinda figure out more of what's going on uh, 
with all the different characters that they uh, revealed. You find out about the butts. Okay. I heard about that. Like, I dropped off, I think, after the second season. Uh, or third season. I think it was the second season is the last season I saw. But I did see they have uh, What's-Her-Name from Doctor Who in that show. Uh, yeah. They played the... Um, Michelle Gomez. Yeah. And I was like, oh, she's in that. That's cool. Yeah. Her, her character is one of the more interesting ones. Because she... When you first get introduced to her, she's a super villain. But, well, she has a checkered past like all of them. Yeah. And you, you, you kind of learn how she is, and then you find out why some other characters may may have uh, different feelings about her than others. Okay. But it's, it's pretty cool. So this ends it, right? Like, this is the end of Doom Patrol? Yeah, it's over. They're just completely it's... over. So they, so they wrap it all up pretty well? Yeah, they wrap it all up. Okay. Yeah, you even get a wrap on Jane's story. Okay. So it's worth checking out? Yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. And it's on Max, right? Yeah, it is on Max. Okay. Which surprisingly has a lot of solid stuff on there. Max. Yeah, I mean, they've joined with all kinds of other stuff at well, this point. Well, so. they do Discovery. Then if you're in the States, uh, Studio Ghibli has all their movies on there, too, which is pretty cool. And if you got kids, they have Sesame Street. Yes. But I say, I'm going to just say this once. Stay the hell away from Sesame Street. Why? I love Sesame Street, and I think it's great. Oh, I I just don't like the Muppets. <laughs> okay. In there. Yeah, it's just. All right, sir. We're gonna roll into Aot. Well, it's the the season finale, the the final episode, the final final. The I don't final know. final final final. <laughs> <laughs> really, they named it something crazy, and I I love the final. It's it had been a while since the previous thing that I had watched, which was called something similar. That was crazy. The but final I was su- season part two or part two? Yeah, three, I think it was part, part one like and this was part two. I don't know, but no, I was sucked in. Part two already happened. Yeah. And they had this was like another. This is the final, 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 final. final. Yeah. And so I was sucked in, dude. I, it was so good. I loved it. it. It was kind of a depressing, like it was an awesome ending, but it was, it was, it, and it, man, it would, I, so I was emotionally all over the place with it. Uh, it was kind of all over the place itself at times. Yeah. Uh, it was almost too much packed into one thing, it felt like. But in the ending was really depressing. Yeah. And I've been reading the manga, and I'm not I'm not finished yet. I'll do a full-blown like manga Attack on Titan review probably on TikTok, maybe on here. We'll see. But this is probably going to be our definitive review right here. But overall, how do you feel about Attack on Titan? Because I feel like uh. you have the best review of it. It's good, but I can't, like, when people ask me a good anime, this this anime just doesn't leave my mouth most <laughs> of the time. And I enjoy watching it, but at the same time, it's a frustration when you're watching it without reading the manga. Mm-hmm. Because basically, every new season, you're asking yourself, where the hell are we? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Because they just do time jumps and they skip content that you can tell has been skipped. Right. Because like you're like, whoa, weren't they just doing this? Yeah. Why are we doing this now? I mean, they did have something like that in the manga, but there is there in reading the manga, there are chunks and time skips in the anime where you're like... Yeah, exactly like you said. It's 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 confusing. Kinda, where if kinda. you if you read it in tandem with the manga, it it's good, but you're better off like the visuals cannot be visually this cannot be competed with. I feel like the the combat at least, right? Like the way yeah. that they transfer the combat from page to screen, phenomenal, mind blowing, superb. But that store but since it's not consistent, I know they cut out the slow stuff. 
I love the slow stuff, specifically in this in this manga, in Attack on Titan, and I feel like that's a huge mistake. But, like you said, I, I can't... It's one of those things where I go like, well, the first few seasons are really great, but then after it kind of it gets confusing, and, and at that point you have to read the manga, or you're better off reading the manga with it in tandem, then it's worth it. Yeah, like, uh, like for example, when I watched the... Uh, I think it was the end, and then maybe season three, I think it was when you got revealed when you got the whole Marnie revealed and they got to the coastline, mm -hmm. and then suddenly they're in Marnie attacking in the new season. Yeah, and then they did some flashbacks, but still there's like a pretty huge gap there where you're having to like watch it just to try to figure out the logistics instead of just being able to enjoy the show. It's still confusing even in the manga, though. Like that, I, I just feel like that's kind of also like a, a fault of the writing, period. Because there, it, the, it does a similar thing where they're at the coast, and then boom, it starts with this, uh, with, the, with the Eldian Empire. Yeah. Or the Eldian Marleans. And, uh, and so that's confusing, and you're like, who are these people? I don't care. Why should I care why? If they're dying and risking their lives. And... Uh, so it's it's really not different, but there's way there is way more in the manga. That's why with this show, I would say read the manga for first or read it in tandem with the show. If you're going to watch the show, like I said, the first few seasons phenomenal. Overall, I loved it, but you have to read the manga because as a person who I read up to a certain point and then I watched the show and stopped reading the manga. And then through the confusion of the show, I was like, I need to read the manga. And then now as I'm reading the manga, I'm going, okay, things are way better and more clear in the manga and make it way better. It's weird because there's certain medias where they go, it makes you want to read the manga. This makes you want to read a manga in the bad way, right? Like you shouldn't feel like you have to to understand. And that's when you're going to lose people. And I'm sure it has lost people. And that's why it's hard to... Like, I want to give it, as a fan, I want to give it a strong must-see, but I just can't. Like, it, I feel like it falls on, like, a week. Uh, watch it if you have time. Watch it. Like, if you're a fan, it's a must-see. Yeah. If, if you've been following it, it's a must-see. You have to finish it. It's superb. Uh, I, like I said, as a manga, it's been pretty superb. So, at least follow the manga if you're going to do that. So, that's how I feel about that. Week. It's, it's a week... Uh, Stream. Weak stream. Yeah, weak stream. If, you, if you're not, especially if you're not, like, already into it. Uh, and then let's cover Loki Season 2 because that finished, and you binged it. Yeah. And people, some people may have see, seen my TikTok, so let's hear from you what you think of it. Um, mixed feelings. Yeah. Like, um, a lot of it, a lot of it I really liked, but I felt like the ending was kind of, kind of cheap and cut short. Like, it's a good ending for the character, but at the same time, you're like, okay, but you still didn't resolve the issue, really. Well, I don't think you see the effects of him resolving the issue, and that's kind yeah. of the problem, right? I feel like this isn't the end. I feel like they left this as almost a cliffhanger ending for another season because even with Ravana, she got pruned and now she's on that pruned planet or, yeah. or dimension or whatever. So I think she's going to go, she's either going to go after he who remains or she's going to go after Loki who has done this because it was, it was Loki that pruned her. Right. Um, so I feel like this isn't over. I feel like he who remains is going to end up going after Loki because Loki is essentially well, here's the thing is this show, this season was weird because it wasn't like the first season where like when he's in the TVA, he's, he can't use his powers. And so in the first season, he's not in the T, like every time he's not in the TVA, he can use his powers. So you see him use his powers. And this one, it's mostly in the TVA. So you don't see him use his powers most of the time. Until they cut off. Until they, until they cut it off. But... There is this thing going on in this show, I feel like, consistently where one episode is set up, the next one is, like, it's it's like a one-two punch. Like, they just kept on doing one-two punches each time, 
And then, yeah, the ending is somewhat over underwhelming, but it also it feels like too much of a cliffhanger and setup for the next season instead of like, hey, let's make it. It was epic, but not epic enough where you're like, it's almost up to your interpretation. And then they'll explain it next season of like what he's doing. They say, oh, he's saving us. And like, that's what he's so he saved the multiverse, like all the strands. And that's yeah. why I say like, I say that Ravana and or He Who Remains is going to come after him and be like, no, like we're going to fight you about this because well, we don't want this to be happening. What I think would have been a better way to do it was, or maybe explain it better, you know, Loki has always wanted the throne and he finally did not want the throne mm -hmm. and took it grudgingly. Like, with the way things are right now, Thor is not really an all-father still. He's right. just kind of doing his thing. Mm -hmm. It would have been cooler if Loki had to take the all-father like, position to be able to manage the multiverse and increase his power. And since he is still an adopted son of Odin... It's his birthright, so it would have been cool if they could have, like, maybe put that into it. Yeah. To bring it back to explain why he's able to do it. Because that would have been a lot cooler and made more sense on how the issue's fixed. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, oh, he's taking o Odin's mantle, makes perfect sense because Odin kind of already does that in the mythology. Right. So... He so him doing that, and maybe even, like, what would have been probably the best thing to do to, if they wanted to do that route was have Heimdall show up to help him or something. Yeah. Or, well, he's dead. That's right. I think, like, almost all of them are dead. So, yeah, I just feel like, yeah, it's kind yeah. of left to interpretation. It was cool. It, visually, it looked awesome, and it was interesting, and I love, like, the Groundhog Day finale style finale and and i love the theme of him being like it comes down to him right because he keep on being like no it's you no you can do it right like first it's mobius that does it yeah. then it's then it's um timely that does it and it's like no dude it has to be you like you need to step up bro like that's it's time for you this is your moment and you you're scared and finally he accepted that and that was cool i just feel like the pacing was a little weird because like it kept on having, like, these climaxes and the dives, and it was just a weird pacing thing, and I feel like the Marvel shows have been doing... Or not Marvel, just the Disney shows, period, have been having this weird pacing, because when they do a climax early like that, you have to top it. So if you can't top it, then it's not going to be better, right? Yeah. Like, and that's what's... And, and similar with this finale, like, the moment was cool, but the overall brevity of it wasn't the same level of when it just blew up, Right? Like, when it just blew up and you're like, oh, my God, it's over. Like, that was bigger than that moment, and it shouldn't have been. Like, so, that, I, but overall, it was really solid. Like, I can't give it, like, a 10.0. I, I mean, we don't do that, but I'm just saying, like, you know, numbers-wise, like, I can't put it too high. It's not a perfect show. It's not, you know, close to perfect. It had its minor issues. I, I, I love the characters. And I, th and I definitely think there's going to be more. I, I think there's going to be a third season. I think that's going to bring in more of, like, he who remains, like, bringing the fight to him. Or Ravana bringing the fight to him. Or both. We'll see. I don't know. And, and then maybe even, like, some more missed minutes. I'm not sure because it seems like they kind of corrected that, fixed it. We'll see. But I, I this is definitely not over. I'm pretty sure it's not over. And I'm scared, too, because I go, like, I've heard rumors that they're not going to do the king and that... That sounds real. That's really disappointing to me. Like you already put in all this work, just follow through. Even if you're gonna do it with a different actor, don't just change it to a different character. Don't change it to Doom or don't change it to the High Evolutionary or whatever. Like don't cop out. You're copping out is what you do if yeah. you do that. Don't do that. You, so they might as well do something. But the, if they're if I they want to do my, that, they're better off re just recasting. I think my issue with the whole Kang thing overall is. They need to, if you they're going to do Kang, they really need to connect it more. Yeah. Like, they're trying to sort of connect it, but not really. Right. Why, why didn't they throw something into the Marvels? 
why didn't they connect it in the Marvels? You know what I mean? Like, they need to be having it like where Thanos. Thanos was Thanos was a threat in like almost every movie in one way or another, even if it was one of his underlings, right? And so, ev- kind of in the right, background. everything led to Thanos, and every villain, sh- or or there should be something where everything leads to Thanos. Like this villain in the Marvels, she was good, and you understood her, and you you understood her side. She wasn't going about it the correct way, but she she had nothing to do with that. And it would have been cool if he was part of that to be like, hey, I, I'm going to put you in this place to set up these dominoes, right, or something. Um, and they didn't do that, but yeah. So, what grade would you give Loki? Um, I wouldn't give it a must stream, but I'd give it a stream. Yeah, solid it's stream. It's definitely a solid stream for yeah. sure. Definitely a solid stream. Um, would you like to talk about the Marvels? Yeah, we could talk about the Marvels. So we saw the Marvels, and we did some short stuff. Uh, Slay J has a TikTok review. I did like a really short TikTok review. We have a short uh, spoiler free review. But now we want to do a spoiler review yeah. of the Marvels. So, if you, I feel like thinking back on this, I really feel like if you haven't seen WandaVision and you haven't seen Miss Marvel, you might be a little lost or not care as much, especially yeah. about those two characters. Whereas, like if you just watch the movies, like you you under you understand what's going on with Captain Marvel. Yeah. The. The one thing that kind of bugged me, I saw, like, some people who just want to trash on who to trash on it. Yeah. Like, they make that point, but then they try to, like, go too far on it and say, oh, and then you have to watch X-Men 3 as well, and that's complete trash. It's like, you don't have to fucking watch X-Men 3. You don't have to watch anything X-Men. You, you really, just understand the scene after credit, you just have to go... That's Beast. You don't really have to know if yeah, that's Kelsey it. Grammer played the character in the past. No. You really just have to know that's Beast, and Beast is a pretty predominant character that most people know him one way or another. They may not know what he's about, but they'll know who he is. Right, people know enough. Like, it's you like, really don't have to know anything. It's like before Spider-Man came out in 2000. Two, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew who Spider Man was. You asked them what he was about, they'd be like, shit, I don't know. But they knew who he was. Right. I feel like that's kind of what you're getting with Beast. Like, they know, hey, that's that one X Men guy that's blue. And furry. Furry. Well, uh, that's, oh, they're still just, Nightcrawler. Um, <laughs> but, but it's just, hey, it's that blue guy. It's that big blue guy. Yeah. Nightcrawler's more of a dark blue. <laughs> navy blue um yeah. but anyways um and speaking of end credits yes there was also a young avengers and i've been saying this for the longest time that they're gonna do young avengers and they've slowly been planting the seeds and finally they've put their footing and they kind of made a joke on the nick fury like uh, making fun of themselves and stuff and i really like that like how and it, it, it was so great like how they they're setting up for young avengers i'm, I'm super hyped about that how there's the the how Miss Marvel Kamala Khan is recruiting uh, Hawkeye, uh, yeah. K- Katie Hawkeye, uh, as we know her um, from the comics, right? And so, uh, so that was so cool, and I can't wait to see more because that gets me so hyped to be like, okay, are they going to do Patriot? Are they going to do these other things? Um, I think it was phenomenal. 